This is Paul Carafotis of Carafotis 12, America's newest celebrity radio host. For celebrities, join me every week to let it all hang out. Come and join us on Carafotis 12. Carafotis 12. Hi, this is Lewis Geiser Jr., and you are listening to Carafotis 12. Keep listening. Yeah, get down, give me 50. I want your DR. He's born in the shadow of Ebbets Field in Brooklyn, right? That's right, man. That's it. Yeah. Grew up with the great Sandy Koufax. And yeah. also from your neighborhood was Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond, and... Neil Sedaka, Neil Simon. Harvey Keitel, Jackie Robinson moved down in the area, got for the Brooklyn Dodgers, you know. We had a whole thing, you know, and then just up the road was Barbara Streisand and all those kind of people. Same, same neighborhood, huh? Yeah. I'm, I'm on the Lower East Side in the railroad flat, and the phone rings, and uh, I say, hello. She says, hello, Lou. I said, yeah. This is Marilyn. I said, Marilyn, who? Marilyn from class. Oh, nice. Not Marilyn Monroe, but Marilyn from class. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think, you find somebody to do this? <laughs> I love scene from Rose that too. And through the phone, I'm getting a Woody. You know who wound up doing the love scene? Who did? Marty Lamb now. Oh, well, they got that lucky. That man's got a secret. You got to interview that brother. I saw him a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Tell him to confess, okay? Oh, really? Yes, I will. If I run into Marty, I'll bring that up. And so now, after the Academy Award, you're sitting back. You didn't think you were going to win it. You were grateful to be nominated. Right. You win it. What happens after? What's the what? What happens in the next week or two in your life? I mean, Absolutely you're... nothing. <laughs> Mr. Joe Montaigne. I met David Mamet, the writer, walks in my dressing room while I'm on the road with doing the show, and he, and he walks in. The first thing he says to me goes, God, I got news for you. I just sold the movie rights to the play Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. They're going to make a movie. You ain't in it. <laughs> And so Mamet says, you know, you're not doing it, Al Pacino's already attached, and see you later. But he was offered the play before I was and turned it down, thank God, or otherwise it would have had a moot point. I mean, to think of that you were taking pictures, to do the uh, thing, I and you were saying, I'm not going to do this. Well, ironically, in fact, one of my clients was a manager who managed a whole bunch of actors, and I did a lot of photos for his clients. And I remember when I won the Tony Award, a lot of people had called my answering machine in New York, there were all these messages from L.A. and from Chicago saying, oh, we saw you in the Tony Awards, congratulations. One of them was this manager. So I don't think this guy knew I was really an actor. So all of a sudden, he sees me win the Tony Award. He calls, he leaves a message on the machine. He says, Joe, uh, hey, I saw you in the Tony Awards. You won the Tony Award. Uh, does this mean you won't be taking pictures of my clients anymore? <laughs> And as it turned out, he was right. I didn't. Uh, I didn't have to do that anymore. Let's talk a little bit about Madonna. We got along. I liked her. She liked me. I think. What I liked about her, she was no pretense. You know, it was all. It was all a good experience. I got nothing. Nothing, nothing bad to say about Madonna. She's a good girl. Little. You know, what would you say? She's not a short little Italian girl. Yeah, that's Italian girl from Michigan. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I can relate. Little with whiskers. I can relate. No, no, no whiskers. She never had whiskers. Well, I get some stories about her that I can't. I guess I can't even tell. Yeah, well, that's that's on you, pal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is E.G. Daly, the voice of Tommy Pickles. You're listening to Care Food is Twelve. Keep listening. Would you want to Tiger Woods, mistresses? No, I wasn't. <laughs> Carafoot is 12, and we have Lanny Kazan, who's been around and done things that uh, I wish that I could do, <laughs> like Playboy. <laughs> like, let's start, let's start there. What does it happen? I mean, I mean... Well, how it happened was that um, I, was, I was in Funny Girl, I was Barbara Streisand's understudy, and I was fired for being too attractive. I went out on the road, and everywhere I went, people would review me and say I looked and I sounded like Barbara. It was killing me. What you could look I at do? All like Barbara I know, but what could I do to change this? And my manager said, "Let's do Playboy." Oh, really? I've seen the pictures. They're pretty hot. I mean, They're you beautiful. were really. I mean, yeah. So I didn't care if I took my clothes off. <laughs> you know, let's take the Jewish woman out of the kitchen. Forget the matzo balls and the kreplach, the stallion in the desert. You know, I, th I that a feel to me. I wish it was me. So it was Stallion like the, the Jewess, you know. <laughs> oh, bah. Hi, this is Shannon Elizabeth, and you're listening to Carafotis 12. Keep listening. Carafotis 12. I'm here with uh, New, New Jersey-born James Gandolfini. So how does it? A person who's never acted before, who's studying acting, get in a show like Streetcar Named Desire. I, I believe that I was having sex with a friend of the casting director. Excellent. And so so was, the whole new meaning to the casting couch. And that's how, <laughs> I, that's how I got the audition. Well, speaking of the Sopranos, there was all the tension between Carmela, you and her. Like, What was it like when you stopped the scene and broke? Did you guys stay in that character mode? No. Well, I mean, if we were doing a very intense scene, he and I would go off to our corners. Like the boxers, you go and you sit in your corner and, you know, you try to keep that level of intensity, but no. Especially, I mean, Edie is consummate professional, whereas I'm a little more of a um, hack. <laughs> Just trying to get it any way I can. Okay, the last thing. No. 
Oh. Uh, for you out there in Radio Land, he's wants you to do this ridiculous. Come on. No. A little jam session. No. An impromptu no. jam session. We... No. What do you mean, no? No. This is unbelievable. I have bongos here. You can play the bongos. Yeah, that'll be the day. <laughs> Welcome him now, Mr. Ralph Brown. When you did with Neil and I, the stoner character, you were asked to, to reprise this character in Wayne's World 2. Wayne's World 2, yeah. I got a phone call at home in Brighton one evening, and I said, that'll be Hollywood, to my wife, and picked up the phone, and, and it was. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the big time. That's right. Yeah. I have to, with us today on Cara Photos 12, this is Davy Jones of The Monkees. Our Monkey show costs $35,000 an episode. What were you guys so, making? I made $400 a week for six months, twice, for two years. And now Peter, Mickey, and I have been out on tour. We did 46 concerts. We played the Greek Theater. We played the Royal Albert Hall in London. So you're still doing this? You're still going out yeah, there? The last time we did it was about 10 years ago, and we just did it this last summer. So as Peter said in an interview recently, that, you know, it, it won't be another 10 years, you know. I'm 66. I, I mean, I'm jumping around like a pork chop when I'm 76 on the road. I'm just thinking, <laughs> we, we did, Pork chop? Well, yeah, if we were to do this 26 years from now, <laughs> be like, Well, you, you, you don't look 66. Oh, here he goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Carafotis of Carafotis 12, where celebrities join me every week to let it all hang out. Or in, or out, or in. It's hocus pocus, baby. Don't be out, be in with Carafotis 12. Okay.